all right guys welcome to my vlog here we're gonna go on three different places on this adventure we're gonna start off in universal studios inside a hotel that we stayed at then we go to the disney wish for four days and then on top of that we also go to disney the uh, theme parks as well so we're gonna go ahead and showcase a bunch of things for you guys in this video so let's go ahead and get into the video game in tech eating brekkie is the game in tech going for a brekkie is the game in tech game in tech is the game in tech game in tech all right, guys, so the, we're going to start off here in a Universal Resort. We stayed here for three days, and uh, this is the first time we're actually staying inside a Universal Resort for us. And this one is Lowe's Royal Pacific Resort. This resort was really, really nice. Uh, it's one of their top-tier resorts, so we actually got uh, Universal Fast Passes so we can go to the parks and skip all the lines as many times as we wanted, which was really good. But what was really crazy is how close you are to the park. So if you can see there in the distance, you can actually see uh, Dr. Doom's uh, Fear Fact uh, Fall, I believe is what it's called. Um, and it was just crazy being this this close to the actual rides and stuff like that and and the resort again was really really nice uh, you can see here that they also provide transportation on these little uh, boats uh, which is really nice to take a night as you guys are looking at here they come very very often every 10 or 15 minutes they were always there and they take you basically from the resort into the different parts of the resort uh, in this particular case we were going to Universal City Walk uh, I love the City Walk there's a lot of good restaurants and a lot of good things to do in here and uh, this boat ride was really cool you can see everything is lit up at night it, it just looks really really cool and uh, I love taking the boat because it's just a really fun time and this is us arriving at Universal City Walk here on the boat. It leaves you really quick. The boat ride is literally like seven minutes to go from one side to the other. You can walk to City Walk if you want to. But again, I like the boat ride. And you can see here we're at City Walk, Chocolate Emporium over there, and our Hard Rack Cafe. They have a, real, a lot of good restaurants. We're here at the front of the Universal Studio store, their main store that has a lot of good stuff. We bought some stuff there. We got the Voodoo Donuts that everyone talks about there in the corner. And uh, yeah. The Universal City Walk has a lot of cool places to actually go to that we're going to be showcasing some of the restaurants that we went to and some of these cool places that we went to here in a little bit. And this here caught my eye because it's called Universal's Great Movie Escape, and this is something that's coming soon. They're theming it with Jurassic Park and Back to the Future, some of the rides that we all miss from the parks that were obviously removed, uh, especially Back to the Future back in the day. And they're bringing like a, an escape room type thing. Uh, this should be opening up soon, they said, so I'm really interested to see what this looks like in the future. But uh, it seems like it's almost ready to go. Uh, excited about that uh, to be coming to the Universal City Walk. And the first restaurant that we went to here is Jimmy Buffett's Margaritaville. This is a really fun atmosphere. Definitely don't go in here. Don't go here if you want a quiet dinner. Uh, obviously, there's a live band playing all the time and, and a lot of cool things going on. But uh, for me, I love that atmosphere. Uh, I don't have any issues with it being loud and stuff like that. It's a really fun atmosphere to be a part of, in my opinion. As somebody who's Cuban or half Cuban here, uh, I love a good Cuban sandwich. Or I had to try their Cuban sandwich that they had here, and it was really, really good. Interesting that it comes with a side of beans that I've never seen with a Cuban sandwich before, but the Cuban sandwich is fantastic, and so were the fries. The next morning, of course, we decided to do a two-parker, so we went to both Universal Parks in one day. You can see here our adventure begins. You can see my wife here completely decked out with the Harry Potter outfit. I, I think she's a fan. I'm not really sure if she's a fan or not. You guys let me know that in the comments below. Uh, but yeah, it was fantastic. We had a gorgeous day uh, of really, really hot, 82 degrees, I think is what it was. And the Hogwarts Express, again, us being really big Harry Potter fans, uh, is really, really cool. I, I love taking that back, back and forth. You do need a two-park ticket, of course, to be able to take this because you're going to two sides of the park but each side you take the train to is a different experience with the harry potter ride inside which i won't spoil here but uh if you're a harry potter fan you definitely got a ride that's really cool uh how they did the transformation uh, of making that thing come to life when you're in that train and then while in the train line, it was really interesting, too, because uh, there's always things that you notice when you go back to a park that you didn't notice before. Like, uh, I always, for some reason, miss this miss this over here. I love the way that this is all set up and the way everything is decorated around the Hogwarts Express. Again, fantastic job to Universal on the whole theming of this thing. And then, of course, Hogwarts at, at night, like you can see here, is just fantastic. I mean... There's nothing like being in Hogwarts during Christmas time like we were here where everything is just lit up Everything has all the lights and everything and everything is just really really even better than it ever was Hogwarts is already amazing lights make it even better And then this is the full show here that you can actually see during Christmas time on the Hogwarts castle I'm gonna go ahead and let this run so you guys can enjoy it if you guys want to skip through it You can but this is a full video. It's about six minutes long or so uh, If you guys want to check out what the Christmas uh, special is above the castle that they do with projections Thank you. 
Coming after that, the Universal show that they do at night that you guys shouldn't miss is just fantastic. It's it's probably my favorite show I see in all of Florida. It goes through all the movie histories and and, and uses water, fireworks, and as you can see here, showing how to train your dragon uh, projected onto water. Fireworks going off here in a minute, and they even theme the. There's actually projections on the buildings behind it if you guys are paying attention as well. The show is fantastic, and you guys definitely shouldn't miss this one if you're a movie fan. Then we ended off the night going to Chocolate Emporium. I love Chocolate Emporium. And, of course, this is our desserts here. That shake that you guys saw there before is their, their shakes that they make that you can get all these crazy things on top of them. And they're really, really good. I, I did a simple version of it, but fantastic. The next day, me and my wife actually went to Volcano Bay. And the reason I'm showing you this walkway, as you can see here by the sign, is because we actually got told by the hotel that there was no way to walk to actually Volcano Bay, that it wasn't close enough. And it would be hard to walk to. And they told us to take a bus. And I'm just showing you here. That is definitely not true. There's a specific walkway that you can actually get to it, as you guys are looking at here with the actual signs. And it's literally like a 10, 15 minute walk. So, And here we are at the entrance of Volcano Bay, my first time ever coming here. And the rides were super cool. The roller coaster ride that they have there is so much fun. And the 
centerpiece, of course, being the volcano here is just awesome. There's some slides in there that are ridiculous. The top one that I rode going all the way from the top to the bottom. I wish I got some footage of this stuff, but it being water rides is obviously hard. But it's a really, really good park. Then on that, we went back over to City Walk, and this time we went to Annie Hotos. I think I'm pronouncing that correctly. It's a Mexican restaurant. Of course, tacos here and stuff like that. We all love their food here. Everything was really good. Chips are really good. Salsa, tacos. Everything was fantastic here. The drinks were really good as well. Uh, I got fajitas, and they were really, really good here. And uh, I'm really, really happy with the experience from here. This is a little bit of what the restaurant looks like here at Annie Hotos. And, uh, again, really nicely themed, really nice place to be in. And uh, the food was fantastic, and we all had a great experience here. And uh, we had a really fun time. This is definitely a place I would be back to. They have a live person singing there, which was really fun as well. Then we ended off the night going to a bar. Uh, it's called Red Coconut Club. We almost didn't go in here because we didn't think, you know, we didn't know what the atmosphere was going to be like and stuff. But it ended up being one of my favorite things on uh, the whole entire Universal trip, especially since I've never been here before. The Christmas theming, as you can tell, that they do an overlay here for Halloween and Christmas is just ridiculous. I've never seen a bar this themed out for Christmas. There is Christmas stuff everywhere. If you're a Christmas fan, you definitely need to go here, even if you just go in here for a drink and just uh, look at these decorations because it is phenomenal what they did here with decorations everywhere you really feel like it's Christmas time in here and, and never seen anything more decorated in my life in here and uh, it looks fantastic as you guys are looking at here through through everything we're showing you and then they even have a, a theme of different drinks as you guys can see here that you can get while you're at the bar for Christmas which is really cool and again they have a second floor as well uh, they had a little game on the second floor you had to go ahead and find these little hidden uh, things that they had around uh, little pickles and stuff that were hidden all over the place which was really fun to play upstairs and trying to find them uh, again fantastic theme and you couldn't really ask for much more the atmosphere was fantastic the drinks were really good and uh, this is us uh, kind of jamming out a little bit at the at nightclub here it wasn't as it wasn't even that packed there were some people there that kept showing up but nothing crazy And leaving Universal now, moving to the second part of our vacation was a Disney Wish for four days, Monday through Friday. Uh, this is the first time I have sailed on a Disney cruise ship since I was 17, so it was a long time ago. And uh, my first cruise for my wife, she's never been on a Disney uh, cruise ship before. We've been on a lot of other cruises like Royal and stuff like that, but this is us arriving on the newest boat from Disney, which is the Disney Wish here. Uh, fantastic looking, obviously really, really nice looking from the outside. Us arriving at port, the port process was really, really quick. Uh, as most people have said when it comes to cruises, it's, it's a very snappy process to get through. Uh, this is still considered the inaugural sailing, as you guys can see here. I actually got some goodies there in my uh, stateroom for coming on the Disney Wish and being a part of the inaugural sailing, which is really cool as we go through the gate here. And this is us going through the line to finally get on board when our boarding group was called. We were boarding group 20. Uh, we are going through the final line here, going through those Mickey ears as soon as you get through the cruise port. Uh, which is great as you guys are looking at here. This is where you finally get through the gate And this is us about to get through the main area something that Disney does that a lot of people do like as you walk through the area here to finally get on the boat is when you walk in here and you guys will see her in a second they announce each family as they're coming in through the cruise and, and kind of walking in the area which I think is a really nice touch uh, kind of to set the mood for as soon as you guys, you know, you get onto the boat, which they will do here in a second. Hello, good afternoon. Hello. Uh, what is your family name? Oliveira. How, pardon me? Oliveira. Oliveira. Yep. Okay. Disney, wish please welcome aboard the Oliveira family. <laughs> And this is the main area that you walk into. Really, really nice ship, as you guys can see. And, of course, we're on a Christmas Merry Time uh, cruise ship. So there's Christmas uh, events and things going on. And that's why everything is decorated for Christmas, as you guys are looking at here. And when you first get on the boat here, it's it's kind of anyone can go anywhere they want. Even if you're not a kid, you can still go check out all the kid areas and stuff. And I'm really happy that they let us do that because I'm really, really jealous of the kids on this boat because they definitely got the coolest areas way more than the adults do. And, and you guys will hear that kind of be repeated throughout the throughout the cruise here but the the cruise ship here as you guys are looking at the kids area is just really really well themed uh they have this whole princess area themed out they have even a library here that you can go through which is fantastic uh just look at how well themed everything is here this is a little area for the kids to kind of sit out watch some tv they got some painting that they can do here 
Oh, all the areas are just really, really well done as we're walking through here. I mean, this is a little frozen area, as you guys can see here. Um, I, I was kind of blown away when it comes to the kid areas as far as the theming and all, all the things they had for the kids to do. As we walk around this corner here, that was Fairytale Hall that we just saw walking through the other corner here. And this is another area here for the kids where they can kind of just get together on tables and they, they do events and stuff like that, building and and drawing and all that kind of stuff. So really, really cool. And this is an even cooler area here that we're about to go through. This is the Imagineering area that we just saw, but here is like where you can build your own roller coaster. So kids can actually design their own roller coaster and kind of ride them, ride them after they build them, which is really cool for the young ones there to be able to do that. Here's the Disney Wish like sculpture that they have here. Uh, so that is modeled after the Disney Wish, which is, of course, really cool. I mean, these areas are just insane. I mean, they got they got a little bit of everything here uh, for the kids here. As we walk into the next area, just look at the, the Disney or Mickey Mouse area here that's themed out for the young ones here, uh, making it feel like you're on a boat. A lot of different things for them to play with and stuff like that. A lot of different controls and games that they can play there in the corner. And then they got this little area here, which is really fun uh, for the little ones as well. They even got little baby cribs in the back if you want to leave like your two-year-old or your one-year-old there. They got the cribs all there in the background uh, if you want to take care of or take advantage of the services there when it comes to taking care of your kids. I mean, this whole area and this whole section here is just huge there's so many little areas for kids as we as we kind of go back and forth here we're, we're i think going into the marvel section next uh, as we walk through here and, and these little things have all things that kids can touch too as you can see here with aladdin that i touch here on the side it kind of moves a little picture there uh, and it starts singing the Aladdin song. So it's not that they're all just pictures on the wall. They, they actually can interact with things for, as kids like to do and touch things uh, which is really interesting coming along the corner here even their bathrooms are themed i mean look at that their bathrooms are all themed out as you walk through and look at this star wars area why this is only a kid's area i have no idea because they definitely got the kids area way better themed than the adult bar that we're going to talk about later on in this video but all these cool interaction things that you can touch all these buttons everything is really well themed it looks like a star wars area it has the exact theming of what i would want a star wars area to look like just like galaxy's edge and, and the disney park looks like but on a cruise ship and they have all these different interactable things that kids can do uh and like little things here as you guys can see here to interact with and and kind of take shape uh, the theming of this area was just crazy. I mean, just look at everything above. They did a fantastic job with this Star Wars area for the kids. And, uh, and look at this little nice seating area. I don't know why this is only for kids. I'm glad they have an open house for all of us to be able to check it out. But, um, yeah, definitely jealous of the kids on this boat because they have everything going on here as far as what I would want on a Disney cruise ship. Then here we get into the Marvel area that I was talking about before, and the and it's super super academy that they have going on when kids can actually turn into superheroes and they have this like uh, AR game where you actually use your hands as you guys can see that kid playing in the background where you use your hands to throw uh, webs uh, when you're Spider-Man and stuff killing all the enemies on screen again only for kids uh, again jealous of the kids again and uh, yeah this is a really cool area here they have a bunch of different uh, memorabilia here as well in the Avengers and Marvel area this kid is just going crazy at this video game it's a ton of fun it looks like wish i was able to try that they have another one there in the corner they have all these different suits for, uh, like captain america here so again fantastic job they definitely didn't uh cheap out when it comes to theming the kids area out and uh, not only did they not cheap out but i think they did a fantastic job on everything that we see here in this video One of the other things that I love about the Disney cruise ships that I always remember when I was a kid is their sail away party where they kind of bring all the characters on stage and, and kind of do like this whole thing before they actually sail away the boat for the first time. And I think it's fantastic. And I have a, a few clips here 
uh, that I'm going to show you guys. Jojo actually appeared in my video here. You will see that in a minute. Uh, Jojo's World. Uh, shout out to him. I love his videos. And I've actually watched a bunch of his videos. Before I went on this boat and it was really cool, I said hi to him and met him, uh, which is really cool. And he actually appeared in this video. There he is right there uh, with his friend there uh, recording this show. And it was fantastic. He was around the boat a lot. I saw him a few times. And it was fantastic meeting him. And he was a really, really nice guy. And I uh, love his videos. Uh, but let me have you guys enjoy the Sail Away party here for a few minutes. So here is 7501. Just wanted to give you guys a quick room tour of where we stayed on the Disney Wish. So this is our entrance. This is a corner room. So the bed is angled this way, as you see as soon as you walk in. So let's go ahead and start off here on the left. We got the couch here. Right here on the left. We got a nice frame there with Cinderella. Right there above it. Then we got the bed here. You see it says Wish right here on the front. Nice little comforter set. You got a curtain here if you want to like divide the room up because uh, this does pull out and has like a sofa bed underneath here. So if you want to pull it out for four people, you could. You can see right here, we got the little brown uh, area for storage. We got USB ports, which is great. So we can charge. We got little lights here and a lamp here. Nice little background, as you guys can see there. Looks great. Like the artwork. Same thing on the other side with two USB ports as well. Uh, sitting, or sorry, the uh, other kind of plug up there as well. And you got the lamp and then a TV sitting right here as well. Little garbage can, little animal <laughs> sitting right here. We got a lamp, um, a mirror here, as you can see, uh, with a nice little light around it so you can use that. Bunch of drawer space here, as you can see. 
Got some closet space here if I move this out of the way. Closet space here with some robes and stuff, uh, a little safe. Our life jackets, of course, so a bunch of storage there. And then if we open this door right here, this is the bathroom, of course. Here's the shower. The shower looks really nice. Of course, everything being, being brand new. This looks really nice in here. Water pressure is actually pretty decent for, for a cruise, at least the cruises I've been on, the, the water pressure has been pretty decent. Got the, the nice Mickey towels here. Of course, the toilet there. We got a sink there, garbage underneath there. Some little storage area for stuff there. This is sitting right here and some towels and another mirror again with the light over here as well. And we do have a plug over here as well if you need to plug something in, in the bathroom, which is great. And yeah, that is kind of like the whole quick room tour here that we have uh, for the room. It is a corner room, so, you know, that's kind of what's expected. You can see the carpet there. That's the kind of carpet that's being used in all the rooms. So I think it's a pretty, pretty decent room for, for a cruise again. Uh, definitely has a little Disney touch with the background there of the wallpaper there and here. Uh, but other than that, and then the two the two um, artworks on the wall, um, and of course the wish being right there, right in front of the bed. So those those are kind of like the Disney touches in the rooms. But that should be it for this video. Uh, I'm showing you a quick room tour of 7501. If you guys stay here. So one of the things that I ended up really liking on the Disney Wish that I never experienced on another boat before on any of the other cruises I've ever been on is that you actually go to different restaurants every single night. And the first restaurant that we went to, or almost every single night, uh, they all have their own things, which we'll talk about in this video. And the first restaurant we actually went to was Arendelle from Frozen. And as you can see, again, the theming on this restaurant is fantastic. They did not do... They, they didn't cheap out on anything. You can see the long corridor. You really feel like you're entering Arendelle. The whole point of this is there is a celebration going on uh, for the marriage of of the characters here, and it's fantastic. And you can see you're walking through the hallway. You have all the different artwork and stuff like that. And it's really, really cool. And what they do on these, uh, as we walk into the restaurant here, what they do is that they put on a show. Uh, this one being the first one, like I said, Arendelle for Frozen. And they put on a show in center stage. The only thing that was a little bit disappointing for us is we literally got the very end of the corner of the room. So we weren't like at the prime action of of the show obviously the show is on the center stage so the closer you are to it the better experience you're gonna have and we were all the way in the corner i still saw everything i didn't have like anything in the way so i still saw the characters and how the, all the music and everything that was going on but i wish i was closer to the actual action because i think i would enjoy the show even more but the show was fantastic either way i love uh, the renditions that they did and, and the characters and stuff like that and you guys will see that here shortly a, a little bits and pieces of it uh, but the theming of the restaurant as we walk in here is is just top notch. Um, definitely my favorite restaurant as far as the theming goes uh, because they went all out. Um, and it was my second favorite when it comes to food, which we'll talk about here shortly on, uh, on my first one. But the food here was fantastic. Uh, everything that we had was really, really good. And uh, for the most part, that kind of stayed true on our, on our cruise ship, except for one restaurant, which we'll talk about later in the video. Um, but... Yeah, this this place was a fantastic. And let me show you and let me let you guys listen to some of the clips here from these shows so you guys can get an idea of what goes on here. Royal decorations, no? 
Anna and Elsa on every plate <laughs> just for a party, yeah? <laughs> you are all coming to big summer blowouts as well, yeah? <laughs> I give you free trip to sauna, no? All right, I see you there, family. <laughs> <laughs> Enjoy the food. So they do have drinks that are themed to the different restaurants and stuff. I didn't get a specific drink on here. My wife did though here, as you can see, with that blue frozen drink there, which is really cool. I just got my strawberry daiquiri like I do everywhere because uh, that's my my thing. And, and then we have the food here. That that thing right there is kind of the staple that everyone talks about. It has scallops inside. If you're a scallop fan, that's definitely not one to be missed. The tart that I had here was also fantastic. And uh, then we have uh, this apple pie here, which was really, really good. Uh, we unfortunately didn't get a, a video of the dinner, but the dinner here was fantastic. Everyone loved their dinner, and we had a great time eating here. Everything about the food was really, really good. So not surprised being on a cruise ship of how good that was. And this is a little show that they have for the tree lighting here, which I'll let you guys listen into. And then I love coming back to the room every night and seeing which animal we're going to get uh, being themed with these towels. That's the best part about cruises, in my opinion, when you come back to your room and see these different animals. And then these shows. The shows on the Disney Wish were all fantastic. The first show that we saw was Disney Seas of Adventure. This was our third favorite. Uh, it was only 30 minutes long. That's kind of what held it back. I think they could have done more with the show. What was there was awesome, but I wish it would have been longer uh, than it was. But it was still a really good show. And then we went over to the silent DJ party here, as you guys can see. And it's really fun because everyone's kind of, there's three different stations and some people are listening to different things based on the color you see on the headphones. Uh, the only disappointing thing is that they had these on every night, but they play the exact same track and the exact same music list on every single one we went to, which made no sense. So we only came back twice because we realized the music was all the same, which was really disappointing. This is now the Star Wars bar that they had on the boat, the Star Wars Hyperspace Lounge, which is obviously more themed towards adults. You get to press a button to actually open the door, which I think is really cool because it kind of secluded it. As you can see here, the theming in here is kind of like a sci-fi, like really hyper-realistic, uh, futuristic Star Wars bar. And I don't mind it. That's like, I think it looks really cool, but obviously I like the kids area better because it feels like you're more in a Star Wars movie. This, uh, I can tell what they were going for, that they're obviously going for your futuristic uh, Star Wars bar, which I don't mind. Uh, I, I, it, it looks really good either way. And I still felt like I was in outer space in a Star Wars bar. But when you go to that kids area, it kind of, kind of makes you wish that they just went with that theme instead. Uh, then here they have these little iPads that they had running around where you can check out all the drinks. There's little data pads, which I think is a nice touch to the bar on how they actually do that, uh, which I really, really liked. And the, the drinks here were, you know, we got a couple of drinks here in a minute, which I didn't have because I'm not the hugest drinker, but my wife and her friends definitely did. And they enjoyed theirs. As you guys will see here in a minute, they kind of like bubble up and stuff like that. They all have their own cool effects. They have a $5,000 drink on here if you guys are crazy. If you guys want to buy a $5,000 drink, have fun with that. Uh, we obviously did not do that, so we don't know the full experience of that. But these are the drinks that we did get, and they and they do the little bubbles that kind of uh, smoke out and stuff. And the drinks are really cool. They have like a Star Wars flair to them, um, which I really, really liked. One of the other things that happens in the Star Wars lounge, like every five to seven minutes and stuff, is you kind of jump... Uh, and go into hyperspace as you can see here and I'll let you guys listen in. It's really cool because the place hall kind of vibrates and stuff like that and you feel like you're kind of jumping into hyperspace and you go into different planets and stuff for every seven minutes which is really cool. 
So this is the next restaurant that we went to. This is 1923. This is our favorite restaurant, or at least my favorite restaurant of all of them when it comes to the food. Uh, the theming is obviously there's a Walt side and a Roy side. So we got the Walt side. It's, it's really nicely themed. This is, of course, where they have their elegant nights and everything looks really fancy here. You have all of these different pieces of memorabilia from, you know, from all the history of Walt and stuff like that, as you guys are seeing here, from different movies and drawings and all these different things that you see as you walk around the restaurant. It looks fantastic, and they did a really good job with this one. Uh, I, I do put the theming of Frozen and Andal uh, as my number one when it comes to theming, just because I, I think that was just fantastically well done, as you guys saw earlier in the video. But this one, uh, the food was just a tad better than what it was at Frozen, but both really, really good, as we mentioned at the beginning uh, of both of these restaurants. These were really, really good. And the theming on here, as you guys can see from all these different movies and stuff, is also really well done. Uh, fantastic on both fronts for both. Um, you got some Bambi here and just really good stuff from Disney as it comes to theming to these restaurants. So like I said, you kind of rotate through these restaurants one day, we're in the other one, and now this time we were in in the 1923, which I really, really like that concept of rotating through different restaurants. Your servers and stuff also follow you. Shout out to Caesar, he was fantastic for us. Uh, that that was our server on here, so you still get that same experience, but you just get to go to different restaurants that are differently themed, which I think other cruise lines should definitely adapt, because I think that's really cool. And these are some of the appetizers that we got here on the corner. Shout out to me for eating my appetizer before recording it, which I forgot, which is what you're looking at here uh, because I totally forgot. But um, it was really, really good. As you can tell, I forgot to even record it before I started eating it. And But all the appetizers here were fantastic. Uh, we got some presunto here with uh, that we got as well with some cheese there and these nice little crackers with some jam on there or, so, or something like that or cranberries, which were also fantastic. Then I got this basil soup. Uh, tomato basil soup, which was also really, really good uh, with some croutons there on top as you guys are looking at here because you could order a couple multiple appetizers if you want to. Uh, and then the dinner here is uh, I got the flame and young, which was uh, fantastic. As you can tell, a really nice thick piece of it. It was so, so good. And then that's mashed potatoes there on the side with some tomatoes on top. Really, really good. Uh, and then here's some other food that the other guys got, which they all thought was fantastic as well. And then it came the dessert. This is a cheesecake here that I got, which was really good. They got a sundae there, which they also really loved. Again, the food was really liked by everyone. We got some churros there on the side that someone else got there. And we liked everything here. Like I said, uh, this was uh, the best food that we had uh, as far as 1923 restaurant, followed by Arendelle that we talked about earlier, but they were really close. And then again, shout out to Caesar, who was our... Um, server here and he always gave us these little magic tricks that he did his little puzzles to solve while we were eating dinner uh, he did a fantastic job serving us and, I, and whoever gets him is going to have a fun time he did a fantastic job in taking care of us on all the different restaurants that we went to again came, up, came back to our room and got another little animal here as you can tell uh, love getting these after dinner and going back to our rooms and checking these out the next show that we saw was The Little Mermaid that night, and it was a fantastic show. This is probably, it was our second favorite show. Uh, Disney sees the adventure number three, Little Mermaid coming in at number two, and we'll wait till later this video to check out our number one. And then we also got some breakfast the next morning. Of course, we can't go out without getting some Mickey waffles. Uh, Mickey waffles were fantastic, as usual. And then we took uh, our first trip was Nassau, Bahamas, and we decided to do an excursion here, and this is Paradise Beach. Uh, which is what we're heading to. They take you on a nice boat ride once you get off the boat. Um, the only thing that I didn't like is that uh, Disney Cruise Line, they advertise this as being like a five and a half hour thing. They pick you up at 11.15 from the cruise port and then you're you're supposed to be back on the boat at 5.15. But for some reason uh, on this trip here, even though the island and everything was nice, it took forever to get on this boat. I think we only ended up getting on the boat at like 12.45, even though we were supposed to depart at 11.15. Finally got to the island. It's like a 20 minute boat ride to the island that you take. And... Um, you know, it was just, uh, I mean, you can see the island here. It looks fantastic. It's a small little island in the middle. Uh, there's a lighthouse and stuff. And it was a snorkeling adventure that we did here that we'll talk about here later on. Everything about the island was great, but we really only got like two to three hours on the actual island, not the five and a half hours that they actually advertised because then they made us leave at like 3.45, even though it was only a 20-minute boat ride, which I didn't necessarily understand why we had to leave that early when we only had to be back on the boat at 5.15. But either way, 
the island itself was fantastic. It was really, really fun. As you guys can see here, it's beautiful. Nice little beach area and stuff. And this is the snorkeling area on the back. This is all our life jackets that we all had kind of kind of ready to go. And this is the dock that we actually just got our, our snorkeling gear and kind of just jumped off. Of course, I don't have any footage of us actually snorkeling because I, I didn't have equipment to actually be able to do that. But this is the area that you do the snorkeling when you come to Paradise Beach, which is... Pro definitely the best part about the whole entire tour was just snorkeling. You go out there for like 45 minutes or so and see all these different fishes everywhere. This is the lighthouse that you guys saw at the beginning of the video. You can actually climb up it and you'll see us here at the top here in a second where you get a nice view of the whole entire island and everything surrounding it. Um, again, really, really fun tour. It was $129 a person. I just wish that the five and a half hours things were more faster paced and we didn't come back so early, but the, exp the island itself is awesome. And then uh, you always double up. If you go on a four-night cruise, you actually go to the same rest one of the restaurants twice, uh, and you get the pirate menu. The pirate menu, obviously, being this one here that you guys are looking at. Again, this was back in 1923, which is the restaurant that we doubled up at on a third night. And again, everything on this menu that we ate was fantastic. That cornbread you're looking at was so good. Uh, I could have eaten that cornbread, uh, you know, over and over and over again with how good that was. The food here, again, was fantastic. We all liked exactly what we ate here with the appetizers and everything that you guys are seeing here. Uh, everything was really really good uh, from all of us the salad there that looked really really good I had some of that uh, here is my appetizers that I got there's a shrimp that we had uh, which was also really good no complaints about the food up until this point this salad that I had was really really good I love the dressing on the the Italian dressing that was on top of it the, the thousand islands I think is what it was called uh, look simple but really really good piece of salad there and then the dinner came out and this is the one of the dishes that i got the spaghetti in there was really good we got some shrimp in there we got some scallops in there everything tasted really fresh um then we got some jerk chicken i believe is what that was and then we moved on to dessert and and that chocolate dish there was all really good everyone like i said loved everything that we were eating so there weren't really any complaints uh, on this up to this point as far as everything that we were eating on 1923 everything was fantastic and then, of course, we got some drinks in here as well uh, that people got. We got an espresso martini as well. So we all were definitely having a good time at this restaurant with all the food that we got. And, of course, I stuck to my strawberry daiquiri that's not in this video, but that I got on every single opportunity I could because I love them. And then they have the Pirates of the Caribbean uh, show that I'll let you guys watch here for a few seconds. That kind of kicks off the night of the pirate theme that they have, which I really like that they do this on the Disney cruises. I said, of course, for fun. Then we went over to the Inside Out uh, place. Uh, these desserts and ice cream and, and stuff like that and gelatos that they have and cupcakes and stuff are not included in the price that so you actually have to pay for these. But they were fairly priced. And this Inside Out theming, again, was fantastic in this area. Uh, they did a really good job theming it out to the Inside Out movie and these desserts and stuff like that. Uh, really, really cool vibe to be in. Of course, we all wish these stuff was the dessert was actually included, but it is not. But they were really good. Uh, I did try, uh, my wife tried... And the group we were with also tried some stuff in here that we all really liked. And, uh, yeah, it was a lot of fun. You can check out all the desserts that they have here. They got some cupcakes. They got uh, cookies, all these different themes, uh, Christmas stuff that they have going on. These are the cupcakes that I had um, with different flavors. So really, really cool stuff in here if you guys want to try out some fancier desserts. And one of the other things that's really cool that I don't see a lot of people talking about is, is something called the Uncharted Adventures. It's part of the Disney app on your phone. And you can actually go around the boat and actually find these different things that it tells you to go to. And it kind of tells you a Disney story. And when you get to these different destinations, let's say it sends you to, like, you know, the bar area, the Star Wars lounge or whatever. They have all these different frames. And you kind of scan your phone and it scans that barcode when it finds you there. 
and you're going and, and kind of listening to this exact story. And then you actually get to play some minigames. You can tell here my wife is playing a minigame here. It's a Peter Pan minigame that you're going through the top and trying to do the adventure that it's telling you to go through. Uh, which I think this is really cool. Not only for kids, but just for families in general. We had a ton of fun uh, playing this. We didn't obviously finish the whole entire thing uh, because there's a lot to do. But we did the Peter Pan side of things and the Mickey Mouse side of things. And it was really, really cool. To be able to play these mini games and kind of searching around here. Here's me playing one of the other ones here on your phone when you're kind of just uh, battling and doing this. I think they did a really good job, uh, you know, bringing from what I've seen of this game, bringing it to life on your phone and giving something, something cool to do around the ship to kind of ex let you explore the ship by going to different areas, playing these different mini games, and kind of also listening to a Disney story because you also get to see a Disney story not only on your phone but on these frames kind of appear here, which you will see here in a second. That once you finish or battle a mini game like this that I'm doing here, once you actually beat what it wants you to do, it gives you a little short story like this one. It should be right here in this area. That'll be easy to find, right? Right. Uh, Mickey, are you okay? Ah, don't worry about me. <laughs> I'm just trying to scratch an itch on my back. Are you sure? Back to our rooms here again with a nice little pillow created again. Fantastic stuff. Uh, again, loving, loving coming home, coming to the rooms with those. And then this is the pirate night that officially gets started as pirate night extravaganza. I'll let you guys listen in to a little bit of this. Are we ready to parlay? I said, are we ready to parlay? Come on! Yo ho, yo ho! Stop inside, let me hear ya! And then we can't forget the fireworks at sea. Disney Cruise Line is the only one that does fireworks at sea, and they theme it to the pirates music in the background, which I think look fantastic, and I had a ton of fun watching this. Definitely one of the highlights of the cruise. One of the other new things they do on the Disney Wish, which I'll let you guys listen into, is they kiss goodnight. You can all meet in the central area, and then this show kind of takes place, and there's a new one every day. That's a kiss goodnight. The next morning, we went to Castaway Key, the private island of Disney, and we went to the restaurant of 1923 again because they were serving breakfast that morning because I really wanted French toast. Mickey waffles are great, but I was really looking for some French toast, and they didn't have it in the main breakfast area, but they did have it here. So I was excited to come here. We started off with some fruit platters here that they give you. This is all included. You don't have to pay anything extra. Okay. Is it, it is a sit-down breakfast, so it's not just a buffet style like the rest of them, but fantastic food that we had here for breakfast as you guys are looking at here. And this is my French toast that I got, and I thought the French toast tasted great. Um, again, and this is what my wife got here, an egg with some uh, breakfast potatoes and stuff and sausage. She loved hers as well. And then I even got an omelet on the side uh, to test that out, and the omelet with ham and cheese. And that was also really, really good <clears throat> at this breakfast place that I was talking about. Then, of course, we got off the boat here, and we arrived at Disney's private island, Castaway Cay. And I'm going to tell you guys right now, this is probably my favorite thing of the whole entire cruise. Everything has been fantastic so far, as I talked about with the shows, the food, and everything so far. But this is definitely my highlight of the cruise, because I think the Castaway Cay, the island, is fantastic. It's a lot bigger than I ever thought it was. Uh, I didn't realize how big it was. You actually need tram cars to get around the island, considering how big it is. They have a different area for kids. They have a different beach area for adults. And the characters are just everywhere around the island. Uh, as we see here, Chippendale kind of 
roaming around here that we see. Uh, it's really, really cool that the characters are kind of all around the island. There's a lot to do around the island, too. It's not just beaches like some of the island islands I've been to. They have banana boats going on. They have parasailing. They have even basketball courts. They have ping pong going on. They have volleyball nets that you can play at. Uh, all of these different things. Uh, they have water slides, which you'll see here in a little bit. I mean, there's a lot going on in this island that you can actually do uh, more so than I see in other islands. It's not just a slab of a beach and you just kind of hang out there. Uh, there is that, and the beaches are fantastic and really nice, and the water was great, but there's more going on. We got Captain Jack Sparrow here kind of sitting here talking to some guests. Like I said, the characters are everywhere on the on this island, and that's definitely one of the reasons why, you know, it, it is Disney. I just didn't realize how many characters would actually be on the island. I thought they would kind of just be on the boat and we might see one or two, but I was definitely proven wrong. Uh, there's characters everywhere on the island, and it was really cool to see. You can even see here on this map all the attractions and everything they have going on and how big this island actually is. Here we saw Goofy here as we're walking to. We went to the adult area first. We did half the day at Serenity Bay, which is the adult-themed beach. You take a little tram car to get there. Um like I was talking about before, because it is the Serenity Bay, the adult area, is the furthest out. Uh, and, and you could walk it if you want to. There's no reason why you couldn't. It might take you like 20 minutes or so, but uh, the tram car service is really cool. Uh, this is just me taking some scenery shots of the island. Here's uh, Pluto coming along on the little car there as we're walking to Serenity Bay. We saw Mickey, or is that, I can't tell in the video if it's Mickey or Minnie, but uh, it looks like Minnie. There in the background there, which is really cool. Uh, to be able to see her as we're walking around the island. Like I said, they have a lot of things, a lot of shops and um, all these different things that you can do, as you can see. And we're obviously heading towards, uh, and you could do snorkeling here as well, but we're obviously heading towards the tram here to be able to go to Serenity Bay. So this is us taking the little, uh, literally three minute tram car ride to get to Serenity Bay from where I picked you up, literally three minutes. Uh, like I said, you could walk it. It is like a maybe 10 to 15 minute walk from where we started uh, with this tram car. Uh, but it is nice that they have tram car services to be able to take you really fast back and forth uh, from everywhere you want to go if you can't walk or don't want to walk. And then this is us arriving at Serenity Bay, the adult area. I'm sitting here on a hammock kind of chilling. The beach was really, really nice. Uh, as you can tell, the water, in my opinion, was really warm as well. I was in the water almost the entire time. It wasn't like bath water, I would say, at this time of year, but it was warm enough and way better than the Jersey water I came from. Uh, and then here is the kids area. We did go on that slide, uh, even though it's for kids. Everyone can go on it. The slide was actually a ton of fun. They have two different slides, one that's open and one that's closed. And then this is the family beach that everyone kind of goes to. It's the first stop. And the drinks here were fantastic. The water was also really good on here it was even clearer and less um things in the water that like that i saw on the adult side so i actually think i like this side of the beach better except for the fact that there were kids everywhere and it's not the adult area anymore but as far as the beach goes i like the family beach better than the serenity bay actually um but fantastic either way and this is obviously us going back onto the boat there there's a disney wish as we're taking the tram car back to the boat from their private island to get back on the boat here nice little scenic route that we took on the tram car. Again, this is definitely my favorite part of the cruise as far as I didn't realize how much I would actually like Castaway Cay. And their private island is fantastic and there's a lot to do. The food and the lunch that they include on there was also really good that I didn't show off. Uh, that they give you lunch on the island with like burgers, hot dogs, and all that kind of stuff that you would expect. They even have ice cream. Their famous ice cream that's on the boat that I kind of forgot to take a video of, I think, uh, for this video. Their their ice cream and, and, stuff, and their chicken tenders and stuff is fantastic and they have it on the island here as well. To actually have an ice cream machine was awesome awesome to see uh, so I can continue eating that ice cream as many times as I wanted just like I did the rest of the cruise and here comes the uh, disappointing part of the cruise one of the things that I was definitely disappointed with is Marvel here and, and that's kind of been a the theme and I actually like the Marvel show I didn't hate it as much as other people did it kind of reminds me of animators palette uh, that are on the other Disney boats that I went on before and this is the entrance of uh, Marvel. I think the theming is pretty well done. I, I don't think there's anything wrong with the theming. It's definitely not as good as Arendelle, where you kind of felt like you were walking into there. But the theming here is still really well done when you actually walk in here and see Marvel and kind of go to your table and you have screens everywhere to see the show. And again, I don't have an issue with the show. I think the show is pretty cool. Uh, my biggest issue with this restaurant is just that the food wasn't very good. Granted, the food that I got was better than what the others got, but all the others said that the food was definitely their worst experience, and some most of them didn't even finish their food. Uh, and it's, it's really surprising on, on why the food is so not very good at the Marvel 
area when it's so good at the other restaurants that I talked about here in the previous video. So it was definitely disappointing. The show was good. It's definitely not the greatest show I've ever seen. Again, Aaron Dell and Frozen being better. But I did appreciate the show, and I, I think I had fun with the show on what they were doing and stuff. And you guys will get a snippet of that here in a minute. And once we get to our table, you see all these little, like, uh, I forget what they call them on the show now. But these little things that you interact with on the show. I thought you were going to interact with it more, but it's really just clicking a button when they tell you to on the show. Granted, there's a lot of fancy lights around the room and everything and around these things, so it definitely added to the vibe. Again... The show was pretty good. I had a fun time watching the show. It was just the food. I think if the food was actually better, uh, we would have had a much better time here because every time we were watching the show, we just kept eating our food and thinking of how it wasn't that great. But here is the menu of the drinks. Now, the drinks were on a different level again. All different themed drinks to the area. And this is actually my favorite drink that I actually got here. I forget the name now um, that I actually had, but the, the, the drink was my favorite drink of the whole entire thing. And it came in a little cool uh, cup that I got to use. And this is, again, my favorite drink that I had on the whole cruise. And this is the dinner menu that you had here. Uh, again, not a very good menu uh, where, where it comes to the food, which you guys will see here in a minute. Uh, these are the bread that they gave out. The bread was fine. It wasn't bad uh, that you dipped into that sauce. The bread there uh, was always a disappointing theme because that white one, the, the regular white bread, was always hard as a rock for some reason. I don't know why, but here is the show. I'll let you guys watch a little bit of it so you guys can get a feel for what the show is like. All right, thank you. Just, you know what? I need to breathe. Find my chi. I just need 15 minutes. Find my chi. All right. I'm Scott Lang. Um, but you might know me as Ant-Man. And I am Vendine, the Wasp. Look, before we start, let me address the elephant in the room. I've heard a lot of chatter out there asking why I didn't shrink down, go in, and uh, kill Thanos in a really creative way. First of all, gross. Secondly, it's much more complicated than that. Allow me to explain. If only we had the time. Anyway, tonight, through the power of quantum science, we will show you how together we can change the world. Yeah, now look, don't worry kids, quantum science sounds overwhelming, but trust me, it is. <clears throat> These are quantum so this is the first part of the appetizer that we got. These are like some, some sort of pork things, that, pork belly I believe is what it's called. It was not very good. The whole thing was fat. I know that pork belly is supposed to have some fat, but like maybe give me some meat with that fat. But the whole thing was just fat. And we all agree that this was not very good at all because we all got it. And then this is the soup that I got, the broccoli cheddar soup. It wasn't bad. It wasn't anything spectacular, but I ate it and I, I enjoyed it. Definitely not as good as some of the other meals I had. And then came the actual dinner. So this is what uh, some of the others at the table got. And the spaghetti was just very dry, not very good. The scallops, I, I heard, weren't very good. This isn't the dish I got, but they didn't enjoy this one at all. I got a very basic chicken, uh, fried chicken, as you guys can see here. Uh, and I actually liked it, but it wasn't anything special. Of course, when you come on these cruises and stuff, you expect something better for dinner. I just had a regular basic chicken uh, because that was the best thing I saw on the menu. And, and it was good. Uh, but it wasn't anything extravagant, and especially compared to the other restaurants. And we see some characters here when the show ends kind of come out and greet everyone and stuff uh, from Ant-Man, which was really cool. Uh, they weren't out there for that long, but it was cool to see some characters come out here while we were eating dinner. Again, nothing fantastic about the restaurant. The food was definitely the worst of the restaurants that we ate at. Um, minus the actual drink that I got. That was my favorite thing about it. My chicken was fine, but nothing out of this world. And everyone else kind of didn't like their meal at all and, and didn't really eat anything uh, because it wasn't very good uh, from this restaurant. So really disappointing on this restaurant. The show was good. Uh, nothing spectacular, but the food was definitely a disappointment. Normal New York cheesecake with some nice fresh fruit on the top. After all that, we did go back to the room and find another anim uh, animal with our towels. I love these towel animals, as usual. And then the last show that we saw was Aladdin. And I forgot to mention, uh, for some reason, I forgot to take a video, but we did see The Little Mermaid before as well. And Little Mermaid was fantastic. And then we saw Aladdin on here. And Aladdin was our favorite show of the whole entire cruise. It did a fantastic job. The carpet scene, unfortunately, I can't take any videos of the show, but it was just so well done and really, really enjoyable. The number one show we saw on the cruise. And then we we see this pizza. They have more food than I actually showed on this boat. They have all these different areas where you can get tacos, pizza, Thank barbecue, you. all of these different things. And they were all so good. We ate them multiple times throughout the day. And this is the last kiss goodnight that we had on the boat. So I definitely want to show you guys and let you guys listen in one last time.
And this is us leaving the boat here for the final day, unfortunately, even though it wasn't that unfortunate because we were heading to our third part of the vacation. We weren't going home just yet. We were going to the Disney Boardwalk Inn to spend three days at Disney. Uh, I do have some more thoughts on the cruise. Uh, I definitely have other things to complain about that they didn't do a very good job at, like adult nightlife and stuff. But I'll leave that for my full review. You guys can check that out on the channel if you want to see my full thoughts on the Disney Wish. So here we are with we arrived at Disney's Boardwalk Inn. This is the first time that we actually stayed at this hotel. We did stay inside the Disney Resort last year as well for the first time. So this is our second time this year. Yeah. We decided to go a little bit more high-end with the Boardwalk Inn to see what it was like and see what the resort had to offer. And what you get with these prim like higher tier resorts is you get to go into the parks 30 minutes early. And of course, the more you pay, the closer you are to all the parks around you. And the Boardwalk Inn is fantastic. It's obviously got a theme to the Boardwalk. It, got, it has a really good deli, which is actually the first spot that we actually ate in. It's got a Trattoria, which is an Italian restaurant. It's got the uh, Margaritaville. It's got, you can get Disney Mickey Waff, uh, Mickey pretzels right on property. Um, they got ice cream there, even though, unfortunately, the ice cream place when we were there, their shakes and stuff were broken, which is really unfortunate. Um... And then these are the sandwiches that we got from the deli. I thought mine was really good, uh, and it comes with a side of soup, a tomato basil. I, I thought it was fantastic, and I really enjoyed the bread that they used and, and everything, and the soup was really good that I was dipping into. And this is the view of the resort as you walk around. It kind of goes in a big circle. We're really close to a couple of other resorts as well. When you go around in a circle, you'll actually pass them. And uh, the hotel in the resort is really nice. It's it's big. Uh, it's really good. Uh, you know, has access to the Skyliner right there. Has boats that you guys are going to see on later on. And it's really, really close to Epcot. Like, I'm talking, like, a five-second walk to Epcot. Like, it's crazy how close it is. And Hollywood Studios is, like, a seven- or eight-minute walk. Or you can take the Skyliner or take one of the boats, whichever way you want to do it. But either way, yeah. really, really close. Has a uh, pirate ship here. That slide is not part of the resort. Unfortunately, it was part of the other resort, uh, but it was really cool. Uh, but it's part of the other resort, so we couldn't actually go on it, which was sad. But yeah, the the resort has a really nice boardwalk feel to it. I love like it feels like you're on a boardwalk. Wouldn't really say it's really like crazy Disney. Like if you're bringing kids with you, uh, when it comes to being Disneyfied or anything like that. But it's still a really nice resort. Definitely a really high end resort. And it has some nice Disney touches to it. Here is the uh, arcade. Uh, I was looking at Fruit Ninja and I saw that it was broken. Uh, but other than the Fruit Ninja game, which I did get working yeah, later on, on the uh, the arcade that they have was pretty cool. It wasn't a small arcade, but it did have that Guitar Hero machine that you guys saw earlier. It had Daytona sitting right there. Uh, as somebody who loves arcade, they had to show a little bit of their arcade off so you guys can see what it was like. I had Donkey Kong there in a the corner. So, yeah, pretty small, but nice arcade uh, in there to be able to play. And then we walk out of the arcade and we see the nice gigantic yes, pool area here. I really love the vibe that it gives. Again, it looks like you're in like a boardwalk area. You can see the nice slide there in the corner that I did ride a couple times, which was really fun. Uh, I think the the area is really fun. The, the carousel that they have going on right there, which is themed to be the bar, is I think a really cool idea how it's themed to a bar carousel. Uh, really good drinks that I had from there. Um, not all really expensive either. And the pool area is fun. We got to go in there for a couple of hours uh, when we first arrived since we didn't have a park day on the first day that we got there in the morning and the afternoon hours. So we got to enjoy this nice little area here from the hotel. We were on the fifth floor too, which was fun. I love being on high floors when it comes to hotels uh, just because you get a nicer view. And then for dinner, we actually went over to one of our favorite spots. We went here last year, but the couple we were with did not go here. And it was Sebastian's. Sebastian's over at Caribbean Beach. We stayed at Caribbean Beach last year. And Sebastian's continues to be the best restaurant on Disney property, in my opinion, especially for the value of money, only being like 39 a person. And the food is fantastic uh, if you're into this type of food because it tastes so good. I could literally eat here all day. And they all agreed. The couple that we brought said it was their favorite food probably of the trip as well. And they loved everything that we ate. And uh, I, I'm still in agreement with them. I mean, the only thing that comes close to it is Space 220, which we'll talk about later in the video. But this food here, the 
coconut shrimp that you get. The salad is like amazing. These Hawaiian bread rolls with the jam and the butter is amazing. Uh, it's I could eat those all day. And then you got the the pulled pork, the chicken, the rice, the uh, everything about this is just so good. The the beef that they give you there. Everything, the vegetables, the broccoli, everything just tastes amazing and so good and juicy. Uh, amazing. And it's served family style, of course, so you get as much as you can eat. And the dessert is some sort of cake. I don't know exactly how to describe it, but some cake with ice cream on top that tastes amazing as well. And I'm not even a huge dessert fan, and I still say that. And then we made ourselves over to the Mickey's Very Merry Christmas Party. Uh, we decided to ride a lot of rides because we weren't going to Magic Kingdom any other time. And this is us riding the People Mover, seeing Tron. I can't wait till this is done. I was hoping it was done when I heard about it last year for this year when we came on this trip. There we got a sneak peek of it actually going on, but unfortunately we didn't see it. And then, of course, this is us riding the Jungle Cruise, the famous Jungle Cruise that is themed to Christmas because they theme some of the rides to Christmas, which you'll hear in here. Yes, sir, you're And then they have a Christmas fireworks show, the Mickey Mickey and Minnie's Christmas Fireworks Spectacular. It's amazing and it was really, really good. We all enjoyed it. Here's a couple of snippets from it. Here's another ride that we got to ride as well. It's also themed. There's Space Mountain in the background, which we also rode and was themed to Christmas, which was really cool. Everything in there was all lit up. And this is the, I forget, uh, Tomorrowland Speedway, uh, which is all themed to Christmas as you go around, which is really cool. I couldn't drive those cars for, for anything. I don't know about the rest of these, but I can't drive those cars. And then we had the Christmas show that they have at the Christmas party as well, which you guys will get a couple of seconds here to listen into how that is like, which we also really enjoyed. And this is us leaving the Magic Kingdom party. Uh, everything is, of course, lit up to Christmas like you would expect at Magic Kingdom. As you guys can see here, it looks beautiful and they have a giant Christmas tree in the middle. And this is just kind of uh, us realizing that we're not going to see the castle for a while. Uh, because we're leaving Disney and this is the last time we're going to see the Magic Kingdom 50th anniversary there uh, for the last time. So I'm just taking one like look at the castle as we walk away from it. Back at the Boardwalk Inn Hotel, as you guys can see here, we're taking a boat ride to the next morning. And we are going to Hollywood Studios. That, that is the next adventure on these plans here. Has a nice little boat ride. Like I said, the boat ride takes maybe 10 minutes or so. It stops at a couple of the other hotels and then brings you right to Hollywood Studios, which is really convenient. I love boat rides, as you guys heard me in the previous video. And here we are in Hollywood Studios at my favorite land, of course, Galaxy's Edge. We did ride uh, Rise of the Resistance. It was a fantastic ride. Uh, the people that we were with have never rode it before, and they were just as blown away as I am with this ride. I still think it's the best ride I've ever ridden in my life. From everything from the ride itself to all the technology going into there to the queue line to the theming, everything. They went full stop all out on this ride, and uh, it definitely shows. And the land itself is also great. We had some food. Uh, that we finally, I finally got to try some food that I actually has wa have been wanting to try for a while here at the main area at Galaxy's Edge, which we'll talk about in a little bit. But here is the other view from Galaxy's Edge. Again, this place is just awesome. It definitely feels like I'm in Star Wars. Disney did a great job with Galaxy's Edge, in my opinion, as far as the theming and just feeling like I'm in a Star Wars movie. Um, it, it just looks great and it's fantastic. And I love coming here. And uh, there is the view from there. It looks great. And then we also went to, this is the area that we got the food here uh, in uh, Galaxy's Edge. We fi I finally got to try, like I said, the food that I've been wanting to try for a while because we all wanted some breakfast because we were hungry. And that's the Ronto Wraps. We've got the breakfast Ronto Wraps here coming up in a second. In this area, the food is really good. Uh, and the Ronto Wraps were just as good as I was hoping for. I've heard a lot about them uh, before I went to Disney and I finally got to try them out. Here's exactly what they look like. It, the sauce is really good to it. It's like a, a sausage and an egg wrapped in an, like this little um, 
flatbread, as you guys are looking at, the sauce really sells it, and I think it tastes great, and it was a great breakfast right in the beginning of the morning. And the other person we were with got, like, a fruit salad bowl that they also said, or uh, yogurt and stuff like that that they also said was really good from the same place. And I don't know how many of you guys remember in Hollywood Studios, but I definitely remember my uh, Indiana Jones. I mean, I saw this when I was a kid. And I can't believe the show is exactly the same still as it was back then. Uh, but I haven't seen it in literally like maybe 15 years, uh, or maybe even longer than that. And it was great to kind of relive those childhood memories watching this show all over again. Next thing is we got to go into the Galaxy's, uh, Galaxy's Edge Bar, the Star Wars bar that they have there. Uh, for the first, well, we went here last year, but uh, our friends that we came with and didn't obviously go here before, and it was really cool to be in here again. I love the the feel. Again, this is what a Star Wars bar should be like. I wish they would have just taken this bar and kind of threw it on the Disney Wish that we talked about before, because this is exactly what I want a Star Wars bar to look like, in my opinion. And of course, we got some drinks on here. I didn't get any drinks because I'm not that big of an alcoholic, and it would have been a waste of money for me because I don't know what to get. And I already tried one last year and didn't really like it. But these two, uh, guys that we were with got all these drinks here, and they all really really like theirs other ones who actually like alcohol so i take their opinion the next place we went to we went here for lunch is the sci-fi dine and i've been trying to get this place i tried to get it last year couldn't get reservations and i got it this year and i'm super super happy i did uh this is obviously like you're in a drive-in movie theater it has like the 80s vibe where you're watching a giant screen there it has these little speakers on the side so you can hear the movie and not only was it a fantastic atmosphere one of my favorite atmospheres that i went to in a dining place for disney uh, they also have really, really good burgers. The burgers and the uh, pick, uh, fried pickles that we got and the onion rings that you're going to see here in a minute were really, really good. These fried pickles were great. And look at the, the quantity that they give you, too. It's, it's not like they give you, like, two or three. These were just appetizers. They gave you a lot of food here, in my opinion, and uh, it tasted great. Uh, we were eating these the whole entire time, and this was a fantastic atmosphere, and I love being in these little cars and stuff. You do need reservations, though, and it uh, definitely goes quickly. And this is the burger that I got. The burger was so good. Uh, this barbecue burger that we got with the onions and everything. Uh, really, really juicy. Really, really thick, as you guys can see there. And the fries were also really good. Moving right into another dining place, because there was nothing else in the middle of the day besides rides all day that we loved, is the Hollywood, uh, Hollywood Vine and Dine. This place was also great. Um, we got the Fantasmic package because I really wanted to get good seats for Fantasmic, which I'm glad I did because uh, I was really looking forward to that show, which we'll talk about later. These rolls that they gave us were what I wish the cruise rolls were like on the Disney Wish because they were terrible and hard as a rock. These were soft and really, really warm, exactly what I expected the Disney Wish to have that they didn't, but they were here, and these tasted fantastic. And this was an interesting appetizer that the couple got here. I, I forget the name of this thing, but it's like a bone thing. It's, it's really interesting. He said he loved it, and she got the salad here, and, and she liked hers as well. Um, we had a great time eating, and these are my appetizers here. I got this whole, like, meat platter with these crackers and stuff, and this was also really, really good with the cheeses. I love those crackers there. Um, they had, like, a little uh, sugary taste on them. And then I got Flam Young again because I wanted to compare. And this was just as good as the other one, as you can see. Uh, I, I had a really good dinner there. Uh, I really, really enjoyed the filet mignon. It was cooked to perfection, to medium, like I usually get. And uh, then my wife got the Cobb salad, which is the most popular thing at this place. And I got to try some of her Cobb salad. And let me tell you, I'm not a, like the biggest salad person for dinner, but that salad was amazing. And I would 100% come back just for that Cobb salad alone. It was fantastic. And these guys also enjoyed their dinner there. Then it comes with a, a kind of pudding here. Uh, for dessert that I got, which was also really, really good as a person, again, who's not huge into dessert, this was still really, really good, and I was happy I got this one, and I, I love the taste of it. It was fantastic. And then, of course, we had the show I was anticipating the most throughout the whole entire vacation, and that is Fantasmic. I haven't seen this in years since I was a kid, and I'm super happy it's back, and let me show you guys a couple of snippets of this best show on Disney property.
and this is us coming back after going to Hollywood Studios and kind of showing you what it looks like at night at our boardwalk in place. It looks fantastic. It looks really pretty, as you can tell with all the lights and stuff. Really, really nice hotel. Everything is lit up on the boardwalk, and they have everything open late until 12 o'clock with the ice cream and the pizza that you can get. So after the parks, you can come and get your food if you want more food, which was fantastic to see that it was open late. The next thing we did the next day is Epcot. And like I said, Epcot is literally like a th like a two-minute walk from where we stayed. It is ridiculous. Um, I was really, really excited for Epcot. We were doing a two-park this day. We were doing Epcot and Animal Kingdom as well. And the first place we went to is the um, is a restaurant for breakfast that we went here. Uh, the Crim de Paris, I believe is what it was called. I may be getting that name incorrect. But it was fantastic. It, it was so, so good. The breakfast that we had here, as you can tell. Um, these were fantastic for breakfast. I got the ham and cheese version. Um, I thought they were really, really good. And I, I can't wait to come back to this place uh, as we have eaten here. many. Uh, last year we ate here as well, and it was just as good as I remember. And who remembers this snippet from this ride? Come on now. This is the Spaceship Earth ride. I know it's my wife's and, and our couple's favorite ride, so we definitely rode this one many, many times. Um, th they'll get that joke. But, um, yeah, this is a little snippet of that. And then, of course, the most thing we were anticipating, we did get to ride Guardians of the Galaxy. And I was worried about this ride the whole time because I heard of people getting sick all the time. And sometimes I'm a little bit prone to motion sickness. But I'm happy to report that I got no sickness at all. And it's one of my favorite rides in Disney now. It was so good and so much fun. And then, like I, get, uh, like I said, we went over to Animal Kingdom because we wanted to show our friends Avatar because they never rode Avatar, the couple that we were with. So we went over to Animal Kingdom to basically do Avatar Flight of Passage, and it was just as good as we remember, and it was so much fun. And this is obviously the entrance of Animal Kingdom. We also got to ride a couple of other rides while we waited. Uh, we also got to ride the Yeti ride, which is also fantastic and really, really cool. Uh, this obviously is the theme to Christmas uh, with that giant Christmas tree right in the beginning of Animal Kingdom, which is always fun to see. That's my wife, you know, being herself. And uh, yeah, this was a great time. Here is the Tree of Life. Uh, fantastic to be back in Animal Kingdom again during the 50th like anniversary and seeing it. that tree. <laughs> And then for dinner, we went over to Space 220. This is a restaurant that me and my wife went to last year, and we wanted to show it to the couple that we were with because it was my favorite restaurant. I love the theming. I love the fact that you go into an elevator, as you can see here, to kind of make it seem like you're going to space and stuff, which is really cool. As you can see here, you're looking down, and you're kind of going back up to the space station here to eat dinner. And I think the theming of this restaurant is really, really well done. Have a ton of fun eating here. And more importantly, the food is really, really good on here. And my favorite thing, believe it or not, we're going to talk about another salad here in a second. But the theming of this restaurant is great. Just look around here. You really feel like you're in a spaceship or in another uh, planet. And I think it's fantastic. And we all enjoyed our food here just as much as we did. Uh, I love the theming of this restaurant and everything about it. That's why we came here for the second time in a row. And this is the drinks that they got there. A little bubbly drink there. They, had, they said it was really good when they had it. And uh, they enjoyed that drink there. But what we're about to talk about here is my favorite thing. And that is the salad. This salad literally tastes like they took the greens out of their backyard and put it on my plate. That's how fresh and good this salad is. The dressing, uh, the juiciness of that is so good. These are also, this appetizer was also fantastic. Uh, everything, the calamari was great. Just as we remember it, this, this place was always uh, fantastic. I think the salad that I was talking about before was called Space Green, so I definitely wouldn't miss that salad. And then I got the chicken dinner, which was also really good. The chicken was nicely cooked and nicely tender uh, with some mashed potatoes there on the side. And my wife got that there, and she said this was fantastic. It fell right off the bone, same thing that the other couple said. And she got the flame and young, which was also really, really good. So we all enjoyed our dinner here. And it was all fantastic. And then, of course, for dessert, uh, this person, uh, th this couple we were with, she got that. I'm not sure how to even describe what that dessert was, but she liked it. Uh, I did not, but she, she liked it, so, you know. And then there was that chocolate dessert there, and then I just got ice cream. I kept it really simple here. Um, and it was obviously good. And then we ended off seeing Harmonious here. We got a perfect view, as you guys can see here, of the Harmonious. Uh, and I'll let you guys watch a few snippets of that when it starts here. Um, but Harmonious is a show that obviously is really controversial if people like it or not. I got to watch it again with a better view than I did last year. And I actually like the show a little bit more now. Uh, but we'll see what happens. I know they're planning on changing it in the future. I did really enjoy the show. The couple that we were with, it wasn't their favorite in Disney. They, they rank at number four. 
Uh, we watched four shows in Disney, and this is their last one. They didn't hate it, but it wasn't their favorite. And this is unfortunately our last part of the vacation when we came back here. We spent 10 days doing a bunch of different things as you guys saw throughout this video. We went from starting at Universal for three days then going on a Disney Wish cruise ship for the first time for my wife and a long time for me for four days. And then we obviously went to Disney for another three days for a total of 10 days that we were at like, you know, in Florida. We had a fantastic time. We took a Mears Connect. You do have to pay for this separately because Disney doesn't offer any buses anymore. So we did pay for this. It was $16 a person and then get back to the airport and the bus was obviously really comfortable and it, uh, really convenient and but this is where our trip unfortunately um, ended we did have a fantastic time though overall between everything that we did um, 90 percent of the food that we ate was all fantastic on all the different restaurants across universal and disney all the shows were fantastic that we watched the only the, the only downer was really a couple of parts of the cruise which i touched on some of them already which was just the nightlife for adults was on this on this wish was kind of non-existent. I'll talk about that more in my review, which you can see on the channel after this video if you want to see more in detail thoughts. Um, and also the fact that the Marvel food was a disappointment. But the cruise ship overall was still a ton of fun. Uh, I, so, you know, there there is that. But I'll go more into depth on that in my cruise video. But everything else is fantastic, guys. And I hope you guys enjoyed this video. And thank you guys for watching.